Welcome everyone to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host Bill Spicer. On this week's show we're highlighting Algoma country. We will cover a drive to location and a rail destination and finally a fly-in remote experience. Species this week will be smallmouth bass, large pike, and huge brook trout. It promises to be a great show, so stay with us. We'll be right back. It's hard to exaggerate the fishing opportunities an avid fisherman can find in Algoma's waterways. Algoma country is a wealth of lakes and rivers, some remote and some easily accessible. Novice and professional anglers are sure to find their dream experience in this area. Our first destination is an easy drive to location. We are guests of Adrian Hoke, owner of Macaulay's Motel and Misty Mountain Fly Shop. A full service drive to fly shop located one hour from Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan and eight hours from Toronto in the heart of some of the best smallmouth bass fishing North America has to offer. Our guide for this trip is Walter Agua. Walter has lived in the area all of his life and knows these lakes and rivers intimately. With his vast knowledge and easygoing personality, I'm sure he'll have a successful trip. If you're coming on a budget, we have clean, comfortable rooms. We have a licensed restaurant that's available seven days a week. The store is open itself seven days a week. There's gasoline, there's diesel. The store itself is open from 7.30 in the morning till 10, 10.30 at night, and that's seven days a week, Christmas day and all. After a very short car ride, we arrived at Tilly Lake, one of the many fish-filled lakes that are in the area. I started with a surface popper, and after a short time, I determined the fish were not in a mood to rise. I changed rigs and started using a streamer under the surface. It didn't take long for the action to start. Yep. He's he got it. it. He's got it. Fish on. Fish on. Oh, yes. Good fish, too. Good fish. Oh, Walter spotted that Good fish, job. and I didn't see it at first. And I actually sight fished this. This was fantastic. And I'm trying to get him on the reel here. Oh, this is a nice. big fish. This is a big fish. Good job. This is a big fish. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love sight fishing. He was cruising. Yep. And I actually brought the fly up from behind him. I thought, well, I might spook him, but I didn't. He turned around and come up and grabbed it. <laughs> I hope the camera got that. That was just fantastic. And I got a thumbs up for my cameraman. So this is, this is exciting for me. This is a big fish. <laughs> Scotty's McFly works again. Now I say Scotty's McFly, it's a, a fly that a friend of mine tied and he's a Scotsman. So we didn't know what to call it. So we called it Scotty's McFly. And it's been designed for this northern area of Ontario to imitate the bait fish that's around here. This is a very, very nice smallmouth bass. Very nice smallmouth bass. Now, what do you think of this, people? Wow. Isn't that a start? I'm into five pounds of fish right away. This is incredible. And away you go, buddy. <laughs> Well, sir. Good job. Number one. Hey. <laughs> we got nowhere to but to go up from here, that's, don't we? <laughs> that's just it, yeah. Very, very incredible. Um, what we did, we were, we've been going around the lake, trying to find fish, and I seen a beaver house, or a beaver lodge, and I, I said to Walter, bring us over there and get us by the entrance. And as soon as we went over by the entrance, Walter saw the fish, I cast to it, and I really thought I was gonna spook it, but it turned around and grabbed it. <laughs> that was incredible, just incredible. Some spots on the lake, you got the weed beds where it's up higher and right off the edge of it, it could be sand, gravel, rocks, but they're there to ambush. They can go over the drop to catch what they're feeding on, mainly shiners or dace. We're looking for fallen trees and stumps, which will hold smallmouth bass, can be at any size to what we've seen today or whatnot. And it's great places for structure and for the ambushes. Got him. Got him. Good Got job. Him. Yeah. Nice. Good, good, good fish, job, dude. Bill. That one come up from the bottom, right from about 15 feet. Nice. Oh my God. Oh yeah. Yes. 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 Whoa. Yeah. 
Better get him on the reel. Wow, good fishing here. Walter knows exactly where all these fish are and he's been a great help in me finding them. Oh, here he's gonna go. Man, this is a leaper. Oh man, fight hard. <laughs> oh yeah, here he comes again. Oh yeah. <laughs> he's going up again. <laughs> I seen him I seen him take a swipe at it once. And then Walter said he seen the swirl and then which was right behind it and all of a sudden I felt the tug. Tell you what, Billy, hopefully this is just the beginning. I hope so too. This is this is a good spot. We're drop we've dropped off from about six feet down to fifteen. So these fish are in, in here cruising right now. Looking for a meal. And when a fish is cruising and you see them moving, they're feeding. Wow. Yeah. Not quite as big as that first one, but still a very, very nice fish. Wow. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. The next destination is Lodge 88, and it can be reached by rail. Guests traveling to Lodge 88 can depart from downtown Sault Ste. Marie via Canadian National and the Algoma Central Railway. The Algoma Central Railway line winds its way through the heart of 22,000 square miles of recreational wilderness starting in Sault Ste. Marie and finishing in Hearst. This is an inexpensive alternative to flying into a remote lodge. Also, there is no restrictions on how much luggage and equipment you may bring. We joined Colin McEwen at Lodge 88, located on Esnagi Lake, adjacent to the Chaplow Game Preserve in Northern Ontario. The lodge is within one day's drive of most Midwest US or Central Canadian cities and is accessible only by float plane or train. Uh, I think you want to come to Lodge 88 because of the fishing, outstanding fishing for a variety of species, northern pike, walleye, perch, whitefish. Uh, we have a really uh, good lake for brook trout. Uh, we also offer day flyouts for lake trout. Our accommodations are all relatively new. We've rebuilt all our cabins. Uh, we'll try and take care of every need so you can relax and have a good time. And of course, the food is uh, excellent as well. On my second day, we decided to fly fish for brook trout on one of the local smaller lakes. Many of these small lakes have healthy populations of brook trout and lake trout. Truly a fly fisher's dream. So it's the second day here and Bob has said we should go brook trout fishing because it's a little bit overcast, there's going to be a little bit of sun, there's an isolated chance of showers and he said this is perfect weather for brook trout fishing. So he's taking me to one of the lakes in the area and we can get some big brook trout, what, four or five pounders? and the chance of maybe getting some lake trout. So I'm pretty excited about this. We're gonna get our gear ready, get up the trail, and get fishing on this other lake. Fish. Oh, see? How's that? Can you believe that first cast, Bob? I know what I'm talking about. So what I did is I went to a full sinking line. I'm gonna get this guy in the, feels like a decent fish. I went to a full sinking line um, and a long leader. Oh, this is a big fish. This is a very big fish. Um, and uh, I went to an unweighted bully bugger, a black one with just a hint of, with just a hint of uh, oh, green in it. He's coming towards me. There he goes. I'm trying to get him on the reel here. There he is. Yeah, it's a nice fish. That's a nice brook trout. Anywhere you go in the world. Beautiful oh, colors. That is just so beautiful. Okay, let's see if we can get them up. 
Look well, at that. that look at nice the shoulders on him. Oh, look. Look at the size of this one. And this is mid-May, so he yeah. hasn't even hit the spawning colors yet. Nope. Okay, here he comes. Oh, there's a nice fish. Look at that. That is absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. Okay, so hold him like this. Look how thick that fish is. I mean, it's just humongous. Look at that. Look at that brook trout. Is that not gorgeous? Absolutely, look at the thickness of them. Beautiful specimen. Okay, let me get them into the water right away. Look, they're already going away. Well, we just had a great morning, early afternoon on the lake. The winds are coming up. There's a couple fronts that are going through, which is okay. The fishing still seem to be good. But what I'd really like to do is come back here with Bob one evening and do some dry fly fishing. So we're hopefully going to get a chance to do that. Right now, you know what we're going to do is break down our stuff, go back to Lodge 88, have a nice break, get something to eat, relax, have a cup of coffee, and then go out and get some more big pike. Stay with us. so beautiful. It's one of the reasons why I love coming up here to Northern Ontario. Every day we've seen some sort of nature, whether it's bald eagles, it's a moose, or like we saw the other day, a black bear. This is fantastic. So we're just carefully working over the weed bed, and that's where the pike are right now. Holy mackerel! Is that a big fish? Did you see him, John? Oh, I see him. He crushed it, eh? He did. He hoovered it. It's about I time I saw something. It's about time, my friend. You've worked hard for that. I'll give you. Per okay, so what we've got. Oh, it's strong fish. <laughs> we what we've got is really high winds, and that's what's been causing us a lot of grief because we know the fish are here. We keep seeing them, but. Just getting keep, them. <laughs> keep pulling us off top of the weed bed. So I've been using a full sinking line. Oh, look at them. That's a nice fish. Nice fish. Nice thick one. He crushed that, eh, Carl? Oh, he just hammered it. He just he hammered it. We're going to use the net on Look. this one because with these wind conditions. Oh. I'll try and get him up. Look at him. Oh, he's not ready yet. Oh. Whoa! Oh. 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 oh! oh, it's a nice fish. Oh, look at the head on that fish, yeah. eh? There. That's he's going to go again, so we just try to keep yeah. his... I'm going to keep... Yeah, because I don't want to get him too green. Head first. Oh, oh. there we go, oh. my friend. Right on. Wow, look at that, Northern. Look at that. Now this is why I've come here. Now you see the red in his sides? That's from the spawning. This fish spawned not that long ago. Look at the size of 38 inches. That is a killing machine. Holy <laughs> mackerel. And he took it, what, a rod length away? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put him in the water here, gently. Oh. Let's wait till he's revived a bit. And he's ready. He's already starting to kick. There he goes. Thank you, John. That was hard work. We, we had to work hard. That was so hard. <laughs> this wind's just been killing us, but it finally paid off and we kept drifting over top of the weeds and over top of the weeds and the camera's not showing how much I was cursing, but we got that fish. And the thing is, how many others did we hook that we lost before the camera rolled? Like three? Oh, three and seen numerous other ones. That's just hard conditions. Let's see if we can get another one. Let's Please. try. Oh, right, right. Our next destination is a fly-in remote location. We are traveling to Esnagami Lodge, located on 14 mile long Esnagami Lake in beautiful Northern Ontario. Renowned for its numerous islands, rivers and bays, it provides ideal structure for walleye and pike. A short float plane trip north from the town of Nakina brought us to Esnagami Lodge, also known as the Land of the Giants. Our host for this trip is Eric Lund, owner of Esnagami Lodge. Eric has promised us a fish-filled time of our lives in this unspoiled wilderness. Uh, well, Esnagami Lodge has been around actually since the uh, early 60s. It was started as a, you know, very rustic uh, men's camp, uh, you know, outhouses and, and that kind of thing. 
And over the years, it, uh, it has evolved. Uh, we took over here, uh, the Lund family, uh, 24 years ago now, and uh, it is now uh, modernized as far as uh, inside facilities, uh, and also we have a full kitchen, uh, great home-cooked meals here. Uh, definitely got to leave your diets at home when you come and see us. Uh, comfortable accommodations, uh, bedding, blankets, linens, towels are supplied, cabins are cleaned every day. And we've really got uh, something that's very important is, is our, our, our staff here, both the guides and the, and the gals that help with the uh, cabins and the waitressing. Um, we're, uh, you know, we really want to see everybody enjoy their trip and it's a, uh, you know, we have a very courteous atmosphere and hopefully keep it light and a lot of fun for all our guests. That's pretty much what I got on is yeah 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 exactly smaller yeah, version yeah a little yeah you got a bigger version a little, little bit more because uh, uh, you know quite often you'll fish through a, an area a weed bed and mm -hmm. smaller flies or clouds are in that and then and then you just throw on something big and crazy and it's just big fish just that's what they're looking for. Whoa! Right at, right at the side of the Holy boat. Look geez, at that. That thing woke me up. <laughs> you called it right there, Eric. Wow. You changed over, went to something bigger, and it worked. And something just something different. They're, these fish are in a strange mood yeah, today. Now, this yeah. isn't a huge fish, but it, it made all the difference in the world, yeah. though, by switching to a larger fly. Yeah, I made an example. And it's, it's almost like a reaction. Right. A reaction, a twitch, and it's just something yeah. different. Whoa, and that one's even tail dancing yeah, for you. Yeah, wow. Nice. <laughs> I was just about to talk about finishing off the, the, the cast. Yeah. Um, I wasn't even paying. I was looking for where I was going to throw my next cast. Yeah, and, and again, and, uh, finishing off the, yeah. uh, the retrieve, he took it right at the side of the boat yeah, here. Yeah, he did, yeah. Let's get you in here. Not a bad average size fish. Oh, well, you know, it's fun. It's it's not, yeah. uh, I mean, we're looking for some. We're looking for his big brother. Always but, looking for bigger. Yeah. But. Uh, That's not bad. We'll take it. Yeah. The ones they are taking, they are actually, they're not being shy about. No, no, they're actually, they're, they're, we call it hoovering it down because they're <laughs> sucking it right down. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. <sighs> Rinse them off a little bit. Well, you know. 24 inches? Yeah, 24 inches. Five, four or five pounds probably. Yeah. I'll take them, sure. Yes, Always. not a bad average fish. That seems to be what the average is. I think he was ready that, to go. Aggressive though, huh? <laughs> Aggressive. Well, when they, you know, as, as, as much as we've had quite a few follows today, uh, you know, they're hitting and then we drop it down in that. That one jumped on it. Oh man, he showed himself once. Yeah. And I just I just kept it one spot and jerked it a couple of times yeah. up and down. Yeah, yeah. And that's when he hit it. Oh my. Yeah. Well that's the one thing about you know, we were kind of backward trolling a little bit, so yeah. you know you're able to keep it out there. Yeah. Look at the bend on the pole. Oh my. Jeez. That's an absolute <laughs> monster, that one. <laughs> oh, he must have been out 50, 60 yards at least. Oh man. What a run. What a run, yeah. Woo! Oh, uh, well, I hope we get a close look at this one. Oh yeah. I'm I glad so. he's on your line and not mine. <laughs> That's the luck I've had today. Man, oh man, what a hit. Look at the tail on that. That looks, that's a nice looking fish. Oh, look at how white it is. Yeah. Oh. Oh yeah. Coming in now. Oh yeah. Okay, buddy. Go right underneath there. Oh. Excellent. There we go. Excellent. What a battle. <laughs> oh, I got soaked on that one. Oh man. <laughs> My arm is, is going thump, thump, thump. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's that's, that's what pike fishing's all about. My goodness. Look at, Look at how thick that fish is. The shoulders oh, on that one. Gorgeous. Gorgeous fish. Gorgeous fish. Okay, I'm gonna set her right down here. Yep. Okay. I'm They're gonna, barbless, so they should come out real easy. I'm going to keep my hands away from yeah. them nonetheless. Yeah, I learned my lesson there in Labrador a little while ago. Yeah. Keep your hands away from the hooks. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. There she is. 
Look at that. Wow. That's that's a pike. <laughs> that is a pike. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. This this is what pike fishing's all about. You gotta come <laughs> to Esnagami. <laughs> all big pike, I'm telling you, just humongous pike around here. Wolves of the of the water, that's for sure. Whoops, and away he went. <laughs> That was a professional release, wasn't yeah, it? No. I, I have <laughs> seen one of those or two of those before. <laughs> he kicked right at the last minute there and away he went. Yeah, yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. I'm having such a good time. Such a good time. When you got visual fish like that, exciting. Oh, oh. Pristine wilderness and breathtaking scenery along the rugged shores of Lake Superior. This is Algoma country. This huge wilderness area has numerous operators offering various products such as excursions to remote fly-in fishing and hunting lodges to ice fishing and snowmobiling. The Algoma country is a year-long nature lover's paradise. I hope you have enjoyed today's show and visit us on the net at thenewflyfisher.com. From all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us, tight lines, and we'll see you next time. Hi, I'm Tom Rosenbauer. For videos like the one you just saw and more, subscribe to our channel. You don't want to miss our weekly uploads of educational videos, exciting trips, and much more.